Hello YouTube. This is my part two of my EDC. And I want to first off say that this is a uh, Maxpedition bag. It's an over-the-shoulder bag. It's an old one. I don't know whether this is a fat boy or a big fat boy or whatever it is, but anyway, I've had it ever since they first come out with these things. So let's go through the pockets on the outside first. Water. On this side, just stay out of the way. We have two side pockets. One a thin side pocket that has a spoon in it. One a thin side pocket that has a knife, which I'll discuss in a second. And then we have a big side pocket, which is not too big, which has some other items in it. We'll go one at a time. All right. First off, El Cheapo knife. I think it cost me five bucks. Uh, sharp as the devil. Uh, stainless steel holds up real well. Uh, I bought it from Carter's Country here in Texas. That's our big uh, rifle and ammo uh, supply store, at least here in the Houston area. So that was bought a long time ago. It's been around a long while and still sharp and still going strong. An old cheapo spoon. Uh, bank line. Got to have plenty of bank line. This is heavy bank line. It's wrapped with rubber bands that can be used for different things. And it's also wrapped with some tender material. This is raffia, uh, a jungle type product. It has an 8 ounce fishing weight on the end of it. That 8 ounce fishing weight allows me to toss lines over limbs when I have to string something up. So this, it just has helped so much in the, in the past to run lines and, and uh, I can even fish with it if I need to. Uh, with with a few seconds, I can take this thing out, put it out halfway across the river, with a good bait on it. I'll have a catfish before too long here in Texas. So, bank line, fire starter material. This is just some extra stuff that got stuffed in the pocket, never got removed. It's some lint dryer lint, some cotton balls, and a little candle. Good things to have. Next thing, smaller bank line, also good for fishing, also good for sewing things together if you get a rip in a tarp or something. Sewing your pants together if you happen to bend over and do a whoopsie. Uh, so this stuff is good. I have sailor's needles in another part of the kit and other things to keep them going. Uh, wire for snares, wire for hooking things together, wire for repairing things. You never can tell when you can use wire. A little bit of Gorilla Tape. Uh, probably about 50-60 feet of Gorilla Tape, that's all. Part of my fire kit too. Bic lighter. Inside the Bic lighter is some heavy bank line and over the top of it is some El Cheapo camouflage uh, duct tape. It's good for different things, especially if you're going stealth camping. Stealth camp. See, I fixed this. This is a glass uh, glass culture tube. By the way, I'm a science teacher. That's why I have glass culture tubes. I keep my only piece of personal hygiene material in this vial. This is Dr. Brown, I think, uh, wonderful soap. Dr. Brown's soap resides in here. I can brush my teeth with it. I can wash my hair with it. I can wash a wound out with it. I can take a bath in it. Uh, it's just great. So I keep a bottle of this in here. Do I keep washcloths and toothbrushes? And No. Sorry. If you can't stand my smell, move upwind. Just joking. <coughs> Next pouch. Little side pouch. This is one of the thin pouches. I keep a notebook. I keep pencils and pens in here for making notes, leaving messages, whatever. I have a little uh, saw. This is fiction to be replaced. I got one on order of the better kind, the, the chainsaw types. But this has been, I've used them in the past and they work, but they just don't work for very long. 
This is a bale for my coffee pot. This allows me to hang or suspend uh, my coffee pot over the, uh, the fire and uh, still be able to deal with it. So that's handy. Next pot has only three things in it. My compass. It's a pretty good compass. Not the super best, not the super cheapest, but it's a backup compass because in my pocket is always, uh, well, if I'm out in the woods, will always be a Brunton compass. Uh, little uh, LED light. It's cheapo. Pick them up anywhere for a couple of bucks. My Leatherman. This is old. This is antique. This is probably... Well, I've been teaching for 15 years, and then I was at the medical school for another... This is almost 30 years old, and it's still going strong. It's just a plain old Leatherman tool. The original one that came out, stainless steel, all the blades still work. Blades are still sharp as all get out. The pliers work. I had to put a little oil on them every once in a while, tighten the, the pieces up. But other than that, great tool. I don't need a splurge or a surge or a pudge or whatever they call them. That works fine for me. In the back pocket, we have, first off, Dave, thank you for putting me onto these. It's a two-sided, double-sized space blanket. It has an orange reflector on one, um, orange on one side and a reflector on the other side. Great for signaling, great for keeping yourself warm if you need to. That's really sturdy material there. Also in here, thanks to Dave Canterbury, I have, well, just a regular old cheapo one. I have about three or four contractor bags. Great advice, contractor bags. I found all kinds of uses for them, including picking up other people's trash from the woods. Please, don't ever let me see you throw trash out. I might react violently. Next pouch. It comes out of here. This is my water pouch. Notice it's blue for water. In Texas it should be chocolate brown for water. Don't see blue water much in Texas unless you go about 15-20 miles off the coast and then you're out of Texas. Alright, in this I have items that I would never be without. This I have one of these made up for all of my systems and there's another one in the truck. I have found out some, I have chemicals in here for, for automatic emergency water system, water uh, dealing with uh, really bad waters. Okay, I have a couple of different types of that plus I have iodine in my first aid kit in here. You never know where you're going to be. And if I'm really worried about the water, after, even after I've run it through a filter like uh, what I'm fixing to show you, I still have this material here. If I'm still worried about it, then I will chemically treat it. Next thing in this bag that goes in my water kit. Those of you not familiar with the British military, this is called a mill bank bag. The mill bank bag I think was invented in either World War I or World War II. It's a way of straining the big chunky bits out of water so that they could easily be, be uh, dealt with. It's a very heavy canvas, has a ring at the top, has a marking on it. You fill it to the mark, you let it stay there. You soak it first. You've got to soak it first, get it wet, then fill it with water, then hang it about that angle. The water will flow out the bottom, and you can put that into the pot you're going to boil it in. You've got to still boil it, or you've got to chemically treat it. Or another route is coming up in just a second. So this mill bag bag is wonderful piece of kit. It doesn't weigh anything. It can be used to carry water a little ways. It doesn't, you know, I mean, you're going to lose some, but you've got plenty extra. Uh, it comes in several sizes. This is the smallest size and most convenient for bush crafting, unless you've got a big camp set up where you need a bigger one. Check this out, folks. There are a number of good uh, YouTube videos on it on the British stations, maybe one or two in the United States. I think a few of us use it. I 
I'm a big proponent of it. I'm always making my comments about it. I think people are tired of my comments, but that's okay. Okay, we have the next thing. This is the best thing that's been invented since popcorn. 2,000 gallons worth of filtration, folks. You can't drink 2,000 gallons in your whole life unless you're really, really strange about water. Okay, it's marked so you know which way to flow. So the, the dirty water goes in this end and comes out good at this end. There is a syringe, which I have in another compartment, that goes with this that gives you all that allows you to flush this out. Flush from this end out, flush all the dirtiness out, and so this thing lasts and lasts and lasts. Sawyer does say this. Do not use this, get water in this, and then store it in places where it could freeze. It doesn't do well in freezing water. It will break the filter cartridge up. Second thing is, do not store for long periods of time above 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Other than that, it's fine. I keep mine in my... Since this bag goes in with me every day, it doesn't stay in the car, I take it back and forth in the car. Now, I have another bag, if I go on trips, that goes in the back of my car, and it has a bigger kit, the bigger version of this. And uh, I have several more of these minis. I bought them up. They're 20 bucks, people. Cheap at any price. Instructions are on the little squeeze bag. Do not over-squeeze this bag. This bag is not meant to be over-squeezed. I usually, I usually just hook this up to the end of it like this. And then I have another piece of tubing that I keep in another compartment. I hook the two to get this on this end, the sucking end, and this on the upsurge in and put it down in the water if I'm not using my Millbanks bag. If I've used my Millbanks bag, I'll just put it in the tin that I put the water in and suck it out. Uh, then I get drinking water at the same time. Keep rehydrated. Yes, Dave, I remember rehydration. All right. Uh, but the thing of it is, it's a very small kit. Two ounces. Two ounces. I think this whole kit with the the whole thing couldn't weigh much more than two ounces. And uh, it's easily stored. Look at the size of this deal. Folks, I got big hands. But you can see compared to my, well, my tea mug is kind of big too, so. All right, the whole package is like this. You don't have to bring this with you. Keep this at home, or I use it in case I have to irrigate, uh, ir irrigate, ir not irritate, but irrigate a wound. So it stays in my kit for dealing with wounds. So this is my Sawyer. It goes into a little cloth bag I have left over from my uh, buckskin in days. And I tell you what, this bag is also valuable. I got another one I u I've used before for a coffee sack. In the, in the old days in Texas, we used to put, used to hang a piece of sack like this over a, a piece of metal ring, put it on top of our coffee, and we put coffee grounds in here and then pour water over the top of them to get our coffee out. So this is a second use for this. Also filtering water if your Millbank's bag, you leave it at home or put it in the wrong pack. I, I've got a couple of the Millbank's bags. I want to get a bigger one. All right, so that's my water prep. Okay, there's a little, I forgot this one. Uh, 100 mils, milligrams of vitamin C. It's not supposed to be in here, but uh, I've had a cold lately, so I carry a pack with me just in case I'm not feeling well at work. All right. Keeping on going, digging down into this pack. We're going to go to the front pouch now. We have several little small items in the front pouch. This is where my camera usually rides, so there's not much extra space in there, even though the camera is small and dinky and wimpy. But I carry some spare, spare batteries, waterproof matches, Fire starter. This is this is these things are jewels. If you haven't seen these, these are really jewels. They do a good job starting a fire, and they're one-handed, Dave. One-handed, one-handed. They work great. I don't know who made them, but they are so super. I'm buying another one this week. There's my what that tubing I was telling you about the uh, tubing. I use that for a lot of things. I've made slingshots out of this material. I have made. Uh, uh, 
I shouldn't say that, but a way to drain liquid properties out of other people's cars. Okay, I don't talk about that. But that's in the old days. Hard to do now. They got little things in there. Candle, 24-hour candle. This is cotton muslin cloth. Good for wiping dishes down. Good for wiping your face down. There's a bandana in here too for similar purposes. Or are, either one of these can be used to make char cloth. All right, so that's in there. This is great stuff. Here in Texas, we have lots of problems with bugs. This is hemp cloth, hemp, hemp line soaked in oil uh, in uh, citronella candle wax. So not only do I have a fire starter, but I have something that runs the stupid mosquitoes away. Mosquitoes are nasty. And we have them. Not as bad as Alaska, but whew, almost. More bank line. Can't get enough bank line. This is a cute little thing somebody gave me the other day. Look at this. It's a carabiner. Fairly sturdy carabiner, too. With a little tiny knife built into it. Dual purpose. Thanks, Dave. I think I'm doing a Dave Canterbury ad. Okay, next bag. They come out with the good stuff. We have paracord. We have a retiring Aquamira life straw. Mm, never liked this thing. Dryer lint for the fire kit. Cold steel. Here's an ad for cold steel. This is the Canadian belt knife. It's similar to the roach bellied knife. So uh, I like it. It's got a good bit of uh, gripper here. The only thing, like a lot of people have said, uh, RPM, RP Idaho just did a, a, a vid on a similar knife. I don't like this bloody handle. But it's as strong as a dog. I've had this ever since it came out. I got one of the first ones that came out. And this thing is tough. I have banged it, beat it, and it still looks like it's brand new. All I do is wash it off a little. You can see a few stains and knocks there. But it's a great camp knife. It's a wonderful camp knife. You're talking about skinning a raccoon or skinning a rabbit fast, sharp, easy to get, keep sharpened. Now, this next kit, I really wish I could remember who put me onto this, but he did me such a favor that I got to send him something one day if I ever figured out who it is. Anyway, this is a Trangia mess kit. Nice little top on it, nice little handle covered with plastic so it doesn't melt your fingers. You can cook with it, you can boil your water in it, you can throw it at your spouse if she gets too noisy. Inside, I have snare wire. I have rubber bands. Why do I keep so many rubber bands? They can be used as fire starters. I can make wonderful slingshots with these things, expedient slingshots, uh, and have done that. So they're wonderful to carry. Again, another bag that can be used for filtering water or making coffee. Wouldn't go without them. Vice grips. Great for taking things apart, fixing things, and grabbing onto hot pots. Next thing we go to, another steel. You notice I, on my EDC I carried one type of steel. Well, I carry the old one I used to carry all the time. And I kept it here because I like it because when I fish, this groove here sharpens my fish hooks. The round edges sharpen serrated knives. And the flat edge will sharpen a regular knife. Plus it has... If you can get the thing loose, it's getting kind of tight in its old age. There is a pointy end on it that you can use, again, to sharpen uh, serrated knives, dig out knots. So, love that, love that. I won't even give the brand name because I can't read it anymore. I know you've seen these before. They're everywhere. More, more uh, vitamin C. This is another little trick I found from somebody on YouTube. Taking a straw, cutting it off, putting my uh, melting down one end with a pair of pliers and a, a Bic lighter, and then putting the, the 
Q-tip down in there, sealing the other end the same way with a pair of pliers and a big lighter, and instant waterproof Q-tips are medicines if they'll fit in the straw. Another little redundancy, here's another whistle. I carry one on my body and I carry one in the kit. I also carry a uh, jack can opener attached to it and some extra uh, Gorilla Tape. This is a little cheapo uh, flashlight. So I've got a whistle, <coughs> way to open my cans. I've got duct tape and I've got a flashlight, all in one little kit. Clever that. Fish kit. This fish kit is made for my area of Texas. It covers fresh water and salt water. Not huge size salt water, but just regular salt water you're going to find it along the bank. You're going to be able to catch anything that, to keep you alive with this. You're not going to be able to go out there and grab sharks and, and wahoo and Spanish mackerel and, and grouper with it, but you know that's a different type of survival. There's line in here. There are hooks, leaders, sinkers. Uh, if I need a, a bigger sinker, I could make one from something. Okay, next part of this kit. And by the way, these things are really cheap and they're really good for keeping things dry. They are plastic though, so they will break. Uh, this is uh, more uh, this is more fire starting material. This has got some uh, steel wool in it and it's got some more of those Zippo lighter things that, that Zippo fire starter things stuck in here. Uh, you got to cover every basis. I have batteries in my kit so the uh, steel wool will allow me to short a battery. Okay, next, another part of the fire starting kit and first aid kit is my magnifying glass. This is a fairly pow powerful one. It's made for geologists. Uh, it has two lenses on it. You can start a fire with it. You can pick that ugly splinter out of your finger or in our case cactus spine. Or you can look at that really weird bug that's sucking your blood out. It's probably not a bug, by the way. It's probably a tick, and you probably, if you don't deal with it, you're probably going to end up with something that you really don't want. Stuck in here is an old muscle, uh, uh, old 50 caliber ball. It was part of my, uh, I don't know how it got in here. I think I was using it to tie up a corner of a tarp or something at one time or another, and it just stayed here. It seemed like the right place to be. Uh, ferro rod, a big one. My sewing kit has a couple of uh, sailor's needles in it, got some linen line on the outside of it, waxed linen line, and a few smaller needles inside. Uh, inside here, loose, laying around and flipping around, is my signal mirror. Everybody's seen a signal mirror before. This is not a very expensive one, it's plastic, but then again, that's probably a last resort anyway. And, in Texas, if you can see the sky, you're not really in the woods. You're out on the plains. I don't like plains camping. Okay, next thing in here is a bit of sinew. I wear moccasins a lot in the field, and so I need a way to repair them real quickly if they get a tear or something, and that's that's what I've got there. A little dab of that. This is my, my fire kit, which is breaking for some unknown reason. I'll have to work on it. Okay, inside the fire kit, I have some cotton balls. I have dryer lint. Usually there's uh, my mind just went dead, but that's okay. I usually have some cotton material that's been charred, char cloth. There we go. I got it out. But I used it all up the last trip. This is a brand new box. I squished the other one. Hexine blocks from the military. Scrape these up, make a little tiny pile of these things, and things happen. This is Albady's chert. This is good chert. It makes a spark. No problems with it. Never. I've never, if you keep the edges sharp on it, I've never even had a problem getting a spark. And bunches of them. It's good stuff. I got a piece about the size of my head. I take chunks off now and again to replace them. So I keep a couple of pieces in there. There's a ranger band, which probably should go over the box, but I use a rubber band instead. So that's what's in the fire box. This is not the main fire, my main fire box. This is just the one for my EDC. I have a big one that goes in the pack.
fix it later. One thing about the United States, we've got tons of Altoid tins of all kinds of sizes. So, that's pretty much my bag, except for one thing that I've added recently. I, well, got this. Also in this bag are some uh, brew kit materials, tea, sugar, not sugar, but sweetener, coffee, etc. stuck in the bag. Uh, plus a big chunk of aluminum foil. The aluminum foil is for obvious reasons. You can cook in it, you can wrap in it, you can actually use this to splint your finger if you break it. So uh, I keep a chunk, several chunks of aluminum foil around in, in the different bags. There's one in, or two in this bag. One of them I didn't show you. All right, that's everything in this bag. But let's look at this last recent addition. I got tired. I'm a diabetic, so I have to carry quite a bit of different kit for to handle my diabetes. This is my test kit. Goes with me everywhere, constantly using it. One of my syringes. This I carry with me all the time. It stays in my desk drawer when I'm at work. In the kit itself, I have two different tourniquets. One the new cat type, one the old fashioned type, the one that I knew how to use. Someone gave me the cat type one here recently and I still haven't figured it out, but I will eventually I suppose. It has instructions. Uh, some bulk sealed trauma room dressing for hemorrhage control, compression bandages. Never can have enough of that if somebody gets hurt, an axe chops somebody or whatever. Here's a bit more of something similar to that. Some of this stuff is, uh, this is compressed gauze. It's sterile, crinkle, cotton, fluff, bandage rolls. So, bulk bandage. I also keep uh, these around from my military days. Uh, not band-aids, but Kotex. Kotex is the best bulk bandage you can get. These are thinner ones because I do have the big bulk bandage now. Lots of band-aids in here. I don't know about y'all, but I'm always hacking myself up somewhere or another. Uh, here's a nasal pharyngeal airway. I do not recommend you to carry something like this unless you actually have had practice using it. This is a part of a paramedic's gear, or part of a uh, doctor's gear or a nurse's gear. I have training. I don't expect you to have it. So don't carry it. It's not worth your effort. You will kill somebody if you don't know what you're doing or at least injure them worse than they already are. So, as Dave says, keep it simple, stupid. Some of us end up having to use a lot of this stuff. Okay, this is the general general kit that I expect I would expect any anyone out there in uh, to carry. This has aspirins, it has diarrhea medicine, it has a few small band-aids, it has insect bite medicine because Texas has that sort of thing. It has iodine which can be used to purify water as well as treating wounds. It has safety pins of various sizes. I have uh, triple, uh, triple antibiotic ointment. I've got burn ointment in here. I've got uh, alcohol preps in here which can be used for fire starting. So there's all kinds of stuff in here that you use. More Q-tips. All sealed in plastic. So, that's important. Little first aid kit. That's all it takes. This probably has more of it in there because I take the bottle of iodine with me. I can get it smaller than that. I've got extras in here because it seems like I never treat myself. I always treat somebody else. And it happens just about every camping trip, I end up having to treat somebody's bobo. And the only thing that's missing out of here that needs to be replaced, and it's on my list, is moleskin. Because moleskin is essential. And moleskin was used on the last little uh, metal detecting trip I went on when somebody had wrong size boots and ended up wrecking his feet. Okay, that's all, YouTube. I'm sure you're happy to hear me shut up. Everybody else seems to be. Thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate all the wonderful videos you guys turn out. And I know this one isn't anywhere near to that. But it's my contribution 
to YouTube. So, goodbye, folks.